G'day, how are you going today? And especially, how's it going with those that you love the very most? It's only just a few days ago, of course, that uh, the World Cup has finished. And who won that World Cup? Of course, it was the mighty country of Spain. What an amazing event it was to watch, and I hope you saw it. But here's the real question. Think of all the stresses and the strains, the comp competition, the toing and the throwing, the thrusting and the going backwards. For so many teams, so many disappointments, but it's a bit like life, isn't it? Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. Sometimes things go well and sometimes you just don't know how to cope. And that's the point of our series through the book of Daniel. How can you cope when life just treats you so bad and it's just such a stress and strain? Well, in Daniel chapter one, we found that whatever you're going through, the most important thing to concentrate on is your faith in God and your personal health. Because if you're healthy and you maintain your trust in God, it gives you so much more strength, obviously, to cope with everything else. Daniel chapter 2, we found that there's a reason for hope. God gave Daniel a vision. In chapter 3, we found out that beliefs really do matter. What you believe about yourself and the universe affects how much hope you can have in order to be able to progress beyond your crises. Daniel chapter 4, we found out how that God can give supernaturally power to anybody to make a change and make it last forever. Chapter 5, the power of belief continued. In Daniel chapter 6, we found that you could pray to an awesome supernatural God. He hears and he does answer. Daniel 7, we found how the God outside time and space is able to inject himself into our human time frame. And here when he does so, we find this supernatural being that we are able to access personally. In Daniel chapter 8, of course, skeptics say, how can that possibly be so? Well, God flaunts his power and his control over time and space by giving a great time prophecy. He said to Daniel that his city would be facing persecution and troubles for 2,300 periods of time. And we looked at and we found that there were four empires that would continue to persecute and oppress God's people. It looked so disastrous, but there was a kernel of hope because God said, although there would be much trouble, facing the people of Israel and God's people even today, that God one day would fix everything up. Well, welcome to today, and to help us kick this topic off in the studio, we have with us Sarah Jane Bishop. Welcome, Sarah. Hi. <laughs> What's happened to you? You've, got, you've had some troubles, I think. Oh, yeah, had a bit of fun in the snow. And you did? As, yeah, and as yeah. a result, I've ended up with a broken leg with a plate in it and everything. you got a plate in there, a bit of metal. Yeah, a bit of metal in there. Oh, dearie me. So things don't always go well, do they? No. No. <laughs> no, and they can cause a lot of frustration too. You've been away for two weeks. Yeah, been yeah. off for two weeks, yep. Mm, yeah. Getting used to crutches. Uh, how much longer on the cast? Oh, probably another four to five weeks. <laughs> you know, we're giving away this awesome book. The book's called The uh, Power of Prayer. It's written, Sarah, by a male witch. And he didn't remain a male witch. He became convinced of the supernatural power of prayer when he was a young man. And he's devoted his life. I'm going to put here, this here at your leg because I think you need it, the supernatural power of prayer. Uh, what's the number one reason, though, you believe that God is real, that Jesus is real? Oh, just one reason? Mm. Um, because of how he works in you, the feeling of God mm. when he touches you. Yeah, definitely. You experience God. Okay. It's not just something out there, it's an experience. Okay. So it's not just a dry series of Bible studies? No, not yeah. just a dry series of Bible study. It's not just sore knees on your prayer. It's yeah. not just standing there singing the same old songs. It's an experience with oh. God. <laughs> yes. And when you experience God, yep. how do you know it's God? It's, oh, you just do. You, you recognize what you've read about. Everything comes into alignment. What you've read in God's word, what you've experienced and what you feel, your head and your heart all come into alignment and there's no doubt that it's God. Okay, what would you say to somebody who asks, how can I have that experience? I guess the first thing you would do, or anyone would do when you're introducing someone to God is to pray with them, when you okay. invite the Holy Spirit to do the ministering for you. Okay. It's not up to me to convict anyone okay. or to um, try and change anyone. That's the Holy okay. Spirit's job. Okay, that's actually quite a powerful thought when you think about it because uh, if God is in control of time and space and he visits our earth, and he did so in the life and times of Jesus Christ and still today, yes. if God can inject himself into our time frame supernaturally, and we can access his power and help. It suggests we should be able to ha uh, be able to experience him. Yes, yeah. definitely. Now, what does it feel like? A broken leg with a plate inside when, when God comes into your heart? No, but it's definitely a way that God teaches you along the way. And he teaches okay. you to, um, slows you down sometimes to spend more time with him. Um, the experience of God mm. feels complete. It's positive. It's mm. no doubt. It's hope. 
it's just this awesome sense of hope that despite what's happening around yeah. you, what situation you're in, there's yeah. always hope. Now, unless you have actually decided to experience that for yourself, how would you know whether what Sarah's saying is so or not?